Okay, so uh, my name is Bishak and I'm part of the Systemd crowd and um, I'm going to be talking about the distro part of this whole um, new design for boot issue. Uh, so Leonard's talk was like an intro, but I was making the slides um, yesterday before midnight, so I didn't, could, I had to make up some quotes like a good journalist. Uh, so that's what I thought that Leonard would say. Uh, <laughs> And um, so this gives the, like the technical uh, approach to how this is all put together. But I, I want to talk about um, the, like the more social part of how, as a Linux distro, you, you can actually make use of this and to uh, generate all the necessary bits without going crazy. Um, and I want to mention some things that weren't mentioned before, some, some goals. Uh, so. Um, we want to have reproducible builds. Uh, I mean, I believe that packages should be designed in a way uh, or package build systems where you can rebuild everything uh, a second time and uh, get a bit for bit exact result. And um, of course, uh, reproducible builds of init RDs are part of this. Um, and uh, to not go crazy, I mean, this adds a lot of complexity. If we don't want to go crazy, we have to remove complexity just so that the system is more manageable. So, uh, the current approach that we have, uh, it was it is a design that was driven by by uh, requirements of ten years ago. Uh, the primary thing is that the interdis that we generate are supposed to be fast because they are they must be copied or or unpacked on every boot and. Um, this is, I mean, CPUs are slow. They were even slower in the past. This, if this, if the uh, entire image is large, it takes forever. Everybody wants them to be small. So, um, uh, well, at the time, Sysfowing, it was, uh, yes, there's a sign from the back. Uh, at the time, people were uh, well using Sysfowing, and you couldn't put Sysfowing it into the entire D. So they, so. Lots of custom stuff that, that did some event-driven logic and, and minimalistic boot systems um, were created. Yes, question? Uh, well, actually, more of a correction. I was around when the event-driven uh, Dracut was written, and uh, the goal was not necessarily speed. The goal of being event-driven was getting rid of crazy stuff like sleep five while we wait for a disk to appear. <laughs> there were a lot of sleeps okay, in the okay. old days. Uh, so, Sure, I mean, okay, no, I mean, maybe it's like a, my post facto interpretation, but uh, well, I mean, the flexibility, versatility, uh, and choice were also considerations. Uh, and um, of, because of the way that we put uh, the, um, of we put the, of the, of the way that we configure the interd, we can either put stuff on the kernel command line on or in the interd itself. So, uh, well, I mean, this gives certain characteristics, so everything must be done locally. There is just no way around this. Uh, there is, uh, I mean, we end up with custom scripts and custom implementations anyway. Uh, and because of all that, the environment in which the scripts are running or the programs are running is very special or used to be very special. Um, and uh, as Leonard mentioned uh, quite explicitly, I mean, we, we do, we, we repeat the work that the RPM or Deb is doing or whatever. Uh, and at least in many, I mean, not in every distribution, but in, in Fedora and uh, optionally in Arch and in other places, we use both something, something special and system D. So we kind of have, the, I mean, two, uh, Things that want to be unique together, uh, and all this this complexity isn't really necessary anymore. We can just let system D win, uh, and uh, we spend a lot of time on every end user machine during every kernel update, and this is also painful because it's often the most noticeably slow part of, of an update. So the kernel does not care. Um, it is just a temporary file system instead of a file system backed by a device. Uh, there are some tiny differences, like uh, the kernel will start slash init instead of slash has been init, uh, uh, but I think it's just a historical accident. Uh, so, 
right? I mean, if I uh, want to convince Fedora to use this, I want to reuse distro packaging. Um, I want to use systemd to the full possible extent uh, and also use normal daemons that I would install in the real system in the interd. To a large extent, we end up doing this anyway because, I mean, who is going to re-implement LVM or uh, other stuff in the interd? I mean, this, this is just a waste of resources. Um, and once systemd is doing the setup, the interd looks almost the same as a normal system anyway, so there is no point to do something different. Uh, and we can just use normal things, and those things can expect a completely normal environment with slash prop and slash sys and everything being present. Um, the whole thing shouldn't explode in size, so uh, it, it can be a bit bigger, uh, maybe two times bigger, three times bigger, but uh, not, not crazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, it should be reproducible. Then we can uh, build things centrally, save cycles, then we can sign them uh, and uh, we retain flexibility by building system extensions and this can also be done centrally. Uh, of course, we have to sign those two. Uh, everything is supposed to be signed using the same keys. Um, and it has kind of as a social aspect of all of this. Um, right now, if a, a user reports a bug that happens during early boot, uh, the Maintainers of the interd packages have to look at the bug and figure out, is this specific to the interd builder? Is it part of the interd runtime that is very special? Or is it maybe a bug in some other component? And this creates a, a well, uh, nobody wants to look at those bugs and they just pile up. Um, so the idea is that we, we will build the interds and a number of system extensions. Uh, and uh, I'll repeat this because I think it's a bit tricky. Uh, so the interd is a compressed CPIO archive, and the, uh, each system extension is delivered as a GPT image uh, with the file system, the, uh, a partition for the file system, a partition for the DMV Verity data, and a partition that contains a JSON file that has the signature for the uh, DM Verity data. So uh, it's a bit too, I mean, it's not completely trivial to generate this, but it's also not anything particularly complicated. Uh, and of course, the kernel understands this natively and, and can make, make use of it without, uh, I mean, the, the, the user space just passes the image to the kernel uh, that gets mounted as a loopback device and we are, uh, I mean, we can use it directly. So for example, we, uh, it, it's a common request that people want the SSHD uh, to be started in the interd if the root file system cannot be found so that you can connect to the uh, machine uh, and uh, debug stuff. So I, I can imagine a system extension with, with something that, that brings up the network, starts SSHD, maybe some other stuff, um, for example, in rescue mode. Uh, as mentioned by Leonard, I mean, all the, uh, non-standard uh, storage for the root file system would probably live in some extension. Um, I think that we will also want to bring up the full graphical stack in the interd. Uh, people might consider this crazy, but there are good reasons. Uh, right now, if you are a visibility impaired user of, of Linux, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the full story is pretty sad, but in the early boot phases is especially sad. If we want to fix this, we have to be able to bring up, uh, uh, well, graphics. Uh, this also works for internalization. Uh, we need to uh, display fonts and, uh, well, we, we cannot do that on, on the console. Uh, for similar reasons, we probably want to bring, out, bring up the sound stack uh, right, I mean, if uh, the uh, machine is supposed to talk to you, not to show you pictures, then, uh, well, we, we need this and we need Bluetooth to, to connect to the speakers and maybe also Bluetooth to connect to the keyboard. And I think at th th this point, uh, pretty much all of the distro 
uh, is potentially included uh, to be run in the in RD, I mean, like all the basic components. I'm not saying that we should do this by default or that we should do this in every case, but that it should be uh, possible um, in an easy user, uh, in an easy way that is chosen or not by, by the user. Uh, and I'm sure that there will be more uh, ideas. So, uh, the implementation. Uh, Make operating system image, MKOSI, is a program that is used to build uh, images from packages, so more um, something that we uh, want to do in this case. Uh, it is um, designed to uh, take a list of packages, build an uh, image out of that, then take uh, sources for some program, install this onto this um, image, uh, and generate this uh, final image out of this and, well, boot it up uh, for testing or whatever. Uh, in the case of the InterD, we don't care about compiling anything from sources. We just want to take a list of packages and build the, the InterD. Uh, and uh, we started using MKSI for this because it already has support for the stuff that is relevant. So GPT tables, uh, Verity data, signatures, uh, and it, um, supports creating of uh, archives, so CPI archives are easy, were easy to add. Um, so MKSI uses the uh, distro package uh, manager to do the uh, installation of packages, so it's actually a fairly simple program. Uh, and because we use DNF and apt and so on, we support, uh, I mean, all the common distributions and it's kind of easy to add new ones. Uh, so uh, Fedora, CentOS, RHEL, uh, uh, Mageia, Open Mageia, Mandriva, uh, all are covered by RPMs and Debian Ubuntu are covered by Deb and, and so on. Uh, and there's even some support for Gentoo. Um, and the, uh, um, the build process is parameterized by some configuration files. Uh, and some trees that will be inserted into the image and uh, a set of scripts. So, uh, uh, I mean, tweaks can be done to the, to the build process. And uh, what is fairly important is that MKSI supports incremental builds. Uh, so you, you do a build and then you do another build starting from this point. And for, this is quite nice for building uh, the extension images, right? Because the, the ex system extension image is a, upper layer in an overlay FS. So you, you build the image to, to create the interd, and then you uh, do the build again with the extension contents um, ending up in a separate layer that then is packed up as, a, as the system extension. And um, MKSI writes a manifest, so, so just a JSON file that contains a list of all the installed packages and their versions, and uh, build reproducibility is being worked on. And I mean, there it, it should be uh, available um, shortly. Uh, so the the project to actually build the interd is called MKSI interd, and it's just a, a few config files for MKSI. Uh, when we started working on this, I expected that this would be a lot of work, but it turns out that this is like the, the minor part. The, the big part is tweaks in all the tools and systemd itself and integration of system extensions with uh, uh, other tools to, to make this all easy to consume. Um, uh, so so CamCSI has a list of packages. Uh, and the, a finalized script to, to do like a few, the few tweaks that are needed to turn an uh, host system image into an init rd image. Uh, just it's really just a few files, and um, a set of configurations to how to build system extensions. Uh, this is, I, I mean, we, we, this part is mostly. Uh, uh, something that will happen in the future because we're still fighting with the uh, basic system. Uh, and of course, if you build this, right now we are not doing this centrally as, as it is planned in the future. We are building things locally. And it, um, 
it also means that uh, you want to the build to happen automatically when you install a new kernel and we have some uh, integration uh, with the kernel install uh, kernel installer that is uh, invoked so, so for example uh, if you install that in in fedora you basically will get a, a image built by mkosi int rd on the machine after a kernel upgrade uh, so I guess it's even slower than the current approach, but in the future it might be faster. Uh, uh, and uh, we, uh, the part that is missing, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the technical implementation at the low level is there, but we are missing integration with the distro. Uh, so um, for system credentials. So uh, for example, um, there is a request in Fedora to be able to Authenticate users uh, do, when the interd uh, tries to boot and cannot boot properly against real user um, uh, passwords. So uh, the idea is that we would take a, um, a list of, of users that, that are in the wheel group or have administration privileges, and we will create a system uh, credential that contains this. Uh, uh, the details how to authenticate those users encrypt it using the TPM so that it cannot be read uh, easily from the um, when the machine is offline and then if the, if the boot goes wrong then we can use this to securely allow administrator users to get into the interd um, so right I mean we need less things because things are just too complex uh, in this scheme, we, we let uh, RPM do the heavy lifting or, or DEB or whatever. We don't duplicate packager work. Uh, and uh, we don't take files from the host. We take them directly from packages. All, every package has a, a, a signal, uh, 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 contains hashes for, the, um, for all the files. So we know that the stuff that we are putting in the RD is what we expect. Uh, and then we can actually have uh, images that are reproducible when they're built and what is even more important they're, they're the same for everyone because right now uh, well a user reports an error in the interd can we figure out what they are running kind of right uh, and then right we can sign the images uh, and we can use uh, system d to do the the heavy lifting so it is already doing that in for example in fedora because it is already present in the interd so we just remove the duplication and uh, I mean it's always better to use the the, the, the host implementations than to the custom replacements uh, and since the RD is now like like the any other system I mean it's very similar to to to, uh, to a container system that just doesn't have too much stuff running uh, it is much easier to ask people to, to 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 work on it because they don't need to learn a new special thing with, with special bash scripts doing special things uh, and like at the distro level this is important because it's easier to 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 direct bugs to the right place so that they can fix uh, and uh, well a few years ago we went through this transition where different distros ditched their uh, custom init systems and uh, or well customized need systems and uh, people kind of settled on system D and I hope the same can uh, happen for the uh, inter D basically just maybe there's some uh, splash file that you insert but otherwise everybody could use the same uh, and uh, well that's 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 what I have um, questions comments please go ahead thanks by the way uh, I apologize if something that was covered maybe in the previous talk because I wasn't there. Uh, one of the big issues we've seen at AWS uh, with the initiative to, to the system transition is the fact that we do transition between effectively two environments. So systemd rigs ex itself, we have two ellipses, uh, we transition over. And that transition has always been racy. And the more things you add now to the initiative, the more hardware management stuff you're gonna add to it, the more we're going to have problems transitioning from that Unitardi environment into the 
final operating system. And I wonder whether it's worth starting to think through maybe a world where instead of transitioning, we extend. And so the components that were started from the inside remain. And we just, through either links or overlays or, or whatnot, and bind mounts or whatnot, extend the initial system rather than complete transition. Because we we still have chasing race today, in, I believe, in systemd around uh, block device detection dur uh, during the uh, initial to, to OS transition. We've papered over some of them. But so can I, can I answer? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, in this case, we are not using certainly not using a different libc or anything else, right? We we want to actually use the exact same things. No, we, we still, we still try to... It's still a different instance of it. Uh, you're well, restarting system. Different version. Yes. You're but, you're restarting system uh, D. You, you're gonna have to restart all those hardware management demons, your Bluetooth things. You're gonna have to do that whole OS transition. Yes. And that's very hard to get right. Well, I think that you're uh, not gonna get it right. It that's must the be gotten to get right because you want to restart services all, all services must be restartable during the right of the system so that you can do upgrades uh, i mean the, for me the idea that you require a boot to change your i don't know pipe wire instance is just not feasible uh, and uh, i think it becomes much easier because this this trans this transition from the inter d to the host requires some serialization of state but the serialization of state is exactly the same or very, very similar to the serialization that happens when you restart the service. So I think that if you can get the, the latter right, then you can also get the former right. right but yeah, okay. You never got it right. <laughs> uh, so in a previous uh, slide, you mentioned gentle, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, coincidentally, there's a gentle developer in this room, and, and that's me. <laughs> and so I was a bit interested and curious about the use case you have in mind while um, mentioning gentle on that side. I see um, probably gentle doesn't belong in the same ballpark, uh, ballpark as in as the other binary distros. So, so the case for support for. Uh, Gentle in MQSI is because people also want to use it, right? I mean, want to, want, also want to do the same thing for, yeah. for program testing and oh, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. and image building. Yeah. For the inter -D, I have no idea if this will be useful. Actually, uh, it might be possible to integrate the portage uh, with the new init RD generation way because, uh, you know, portage could be used to um, build packages and install into an alternative route. And we could actually build stripped down versions of a package with uh, like a use flag, uh, like use equals to initRD and et cetera. So it might be actually possible to somehow integrate uh, this idea with a Gen2 approach and philosophy. I mean, yeah. we, we use Portage, right? I mean, we, yeah, we, it might be interesting. So, I guess it will be just a question of, of adding support on the package side in Gentoo. Yeah, send us pull requests. We are happy to have them. Uh, I think it was you first. Can I click it? Oh, go ahead. Does it work? Yeah, I'll use this one then. Uh, um, uh, just to be, coming back to your idea about uh, not doing a, a full React sec, but just adding in basically the root files and stuff. Um, this certainly can work, right? Like, but it's, it can work in a in a in a scenario where people use, for example, Verity for the root file system anyway, right? Because uh, the initRD is basically immutable. I mean, it's it's actually not because it's a tempfs, but it's 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 the, the, what, it it is effectively immutable because it's uh, yeah. But I think uh, uh, in an environment where you have Verity, it definitely makes sense to just overlay this and then have basically just uh, put the main operating system in the initRD and then instead of uh, the inner RD actually finding the real one and react sucking to it, it would just uh, 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 basically merge a big extension into it. That's totally doable, but I wouldn't call that an inner RD in this way. There is no inner RD involved. It's basically just a, a, a system that as a whole is embedded into the kernel and then happens to <laughs> activate one massive uh, system extension, right? Which I think, I mean, it's an attractive model. I'm, I'm totally not against this, but uh, in, in generic distributions, and I think this to some degree kind of focuses on that, so like on Fedora or something like this, it's unlikely to be uh, what you will deploy because, yeah, it's it's not. 
Yeah, but I, I, I like the idea. Like, it's, it's certainly something to, to, to think about. I mean, and in systemd, it's, it's, it's not entirely easy to do it like that because uh, in systemd, uh, uh, once you drop in a couple of services or something like that, um, you probably want to activate them. And uh, the way how you, you activate them is by starting a transaction. And so uh, um, the, 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 the model currently is that, yeah, we at early boot, we figure out what that transaction is and then we stick to it. And uh, here you would have to issue a, at least a reload to systemd itself, not a reaccept, but a reload so that it uh, uh, then afterwards can yeah. like see the new units that appeared, come up with a new transaction, merge that with the old one. So that's, it's good. Cool. There's, there's nothing yeah. wrong with it. But I mean, it's, it's just an idea like this, just food for thought. The, uh, but I, I like the idea, but I see problems. But it we, might certainly we do have problems today. I mean, I believe you were just telling me before, uh, somebody else there, uh, that, for example, Ubuntu does not use an Itadi on AWS for that specific reason. The, the, the difficulty of transitioning is real. And uh, yes, we could just fix it, but clear, we haven't. And, uh, and I think the more we would want to add services, especially hardware, related services, the, the more we might be fighting an uphill battle. I might just be pessimistic, I apologize, but uh, it, 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 it has been in the past at least a, a, a real issue. But I mean, yeah, I, I sympathize with the idea. So mm -hmm. I think it was before. Yeah, I mean, in some way, uh, right now we're at this phase, because there have been so many ideas how to do the TPM measurements and which PCRs to use and what to put where and in which way. I think that we are in the phase of building the tools and, and the actual policy that we'll end up using in, in the end is very hard to predict at this point. I have a comment from the chat. I'm not convinced we should do this, and instead we should maybe look into an init RD list system. Well, I mean, if you have complex storage and you want to have encrypted credentials, then uh, and a system without an init RD uh, is hard to, to, to make. It's hard to make it do those things. Dan, Dan was first there. So I was wondering how in this model, how hardly is the kernel still coupled to the init RD? Do you still need to rebuild the init RD on every kernel? Well, update? if you extract the uh, modules into a system extension, for example, uh, then I, possibly you wouldn't have, but then you would need to make sure that everything that is uh, necessary for the kernel to, to load the initial system extension with the modules is built into the kernel. So yes, I think that uh, not rebuilding at least most of the interd for new kernels would be nice, but uh, I, I mean, I, I would leave it for later. And maybe one other question is how often when you're building the initrd in the, uh, well, in, in as the vendor in, in Koji or whatever, how would you rebuild it on every package update that is included into the init RD? Yeah. If you're the SUSE, yes. Yes, other people not. Well, I, I would build it when building the kernel. So you would get like a new, uh, just repeat the current system. So you would get a new one every two weeks or so. Uh, I don't see why it would be so important to update for every kernel package unless, unless you have an important bug. If. Wait, wait, wait. I have uh, one more question regarding this uh, system, the reload from the init RT. Uh, what are the issues with that? If you were to say like, okay, you start the system D in the init RT and then mount your real root possibly into user and then do system D daemon reload. What would be the problem with that, with keeping the system D in the init RT? Instead so of free exacting it. The initial uh, point wasn't about the system D itself, but about, for example, some daemon to manage uh, raid or something that it needs to seamlessly transition to, to a different copy and yeah. the state must be propagated. Oh. And especially if it's something about networking, for example, then it can be a lot of state, right? And, so, so basically, I mean, to respond to you as well, systemd does still have races and doesn't get that right in a number of cases, unfortunately. I mean, we're trying to fix them, but yeah, it's, what? it's, there are bugs? <laughs> yeah, but really hard, really, really hard one to find and to, to solve. Like it's really not trivial.
So because the um, level of current events coming at the same time during the transition and. So doing just the daemon reload is much like, I mean, this is really supposed to really just work and not create issues in contrast to the React sec, okay. uh, like the, the switch root thing. Um, but uh, uh, still, I advocate that out of the, like that daemon reload should be kept out of the boot uh, phase as much as we can. It's my current thing because it's slow, because uh, um, uh, there are some things where we cannot sanely catch up if they happen while we are restarting because restarting takes time and there's a lot of shit happening during boot like uh, udev stuff probing and things like that and we try really hard to catch up afterwards uh, but this is only um uh, working like this yeah as mentioned there are races this it's like uh it's a really hard problem it, it's a it's a very hard problem and uh, so generally my solution is if you can at all you just um, have the initial system been running all through the end, and it's it's the one that originally um, uh, figures out the uh, transition method. So what? Uh, yeah. So you mentioned uh, uh, the special MK ISO init RD where you were working on trying to use uh, MK ISO to uh, actually build MK OZ. I mean to build init RDs. Uh, it sounded like you already are sort of using that since you also have the, the, the kernel install hook. So, uh, we are using it on our laptops and yeah. it mostly works. How, how big are those in uh, So they're bigger because the kernel in Fedora has all the, well, not, it has their kernel modules, kernel modules extra and kernel modules something something. And um, I just take the first package and extract all the modules from that and put it in the RD and this is about half of the interd because I don't want to bother with selecting the specific. And but uh, if we ignore this question, it's uh, twenty percent larger than the draft. And I would guess you also get a lot of Linux firmware there. You need Linux firmware if you want to bring up the GPU, or are you just not bringing up the GPU yet? Mm. Yes, I'm not sure about this. I put in some firmware, but uh, probably. In, not a lot of it. I don't know. Right, because that's very big too. So, but that's, so they're working on splitting that though. But we, we probably need like one extension per GPU, like an AMD GPU extension. And uh... uh, so, how far away are we from a distro actually switching to this at some point? You know, I think that if we told distros to switch to it, uh, it is technically feasible, definitely, uh, and it would work for maybe you know fifty percent or eighty percent of users, maybe even. But the like the remaining integration pieces would cause such a massive uh, for Nvidia blowback and whatever it, this is, yeah. So I think it for real. It's time to work. Uh, I mean, it, we should talk about this. Uh, when it's like 99% ready, as far as we know, and then we can, uh, you know, like for example, the firmware cases, they need to be covered. I but I think I'm asking an, an annoying question. What I mean is there are some sort of time frame. Do you have any idea when you want to, for example, try and get this into Fedora, which I assume? No, I don't have a timeline. I don't, Michal, do you have a timeline? Uh, no, I don't have a time, timeline because, uh, so first maybe to Hans, uh, like the fact that these init RDs are bigger just means we have a lot more work to do on a packaging side. Because if you think about it, LVM, for example, like now with MKOSI init RD, we take the entire package, but Dracut, what Dracut module, LVM Dracut module does, it's sort of like second order packaging, right? Like it extracts the core of LVM, which is usable to bring up root file system. And we know, we need to make that package as a sub package of, of LVM, same for everything else. So that's, that's the work that we need to do on the packaging side. And uh, regarding what, what you asked about, like, how close are we to use it in in fedora i think that's that's the, the most difficult part is try to figure out like what's essential and essentially first work on getting rid of dracut modules essentially we need dracut modules which have module setup dot sh and install section just installs plain rpms essentially just contents from the packages right. and th that's the first step like once we get there we know we can convert it to this and it will work 
So the nice thing, I mean, because there has been actually many small tweaks done in various places for this, and uh, I did a lot of work on, on tweaking various packages to, for example, reduce the dependency set, also systemd, uh, and one of the motivations for dropping uh, GNU TLS from the default linkage of systemd is, is that. And um, the nice thing is that whenever we do that, we actually benefit other cases, like in particular containers and... Yep. Very much so. Um, congratulations for GNUTLS, by the way. We've been trying to get rid of that for container image for a while. Um, couple of things, uh, just a res quick response to, to the Fedora case. If we really have to, we could imagine adding some kind of uh, RPM environment global that says that you are in that context and have the install section do different things. I mean, sub packages is probably nicer, but if we have to, we can go down that path. Um, uh, one thing what mentioned earlier about uh, kernel modules versus this, they can and they probably should be disconnected. Uh, it would be nice if the MKOSI bothered about the user space and the kernel install could install the necessary uh, pre-signed extension with the necessary drivers uh, so that they can just be uh, collated. Uh, especially in a context where we might want the initiative to be signed, uh, and in, 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 a, in a context again of secure boots and, and, and all that jazz. Um, food for thought. So, uh, so quick, quick uh, answer. Uh, to a large extent, this is already possible because we already collect system extensions from per kernel uh, version uh, location and a global location. So. Mm -hmm. The idea so far was that this is this can be used for 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 example for credentials, which are applicable to I mean, kernel independent. But we can mm -hmm. possibly move most of the entire D if it's like a separate thing into this layer. And uh, again, I missed the previous talk. I will watch it later. But I don't know if the system can just be appended physically to an entity. That way, they get loaded by the firmware, which solves the problem of requiring the drivers to load the system extension, and then they get separate signatures they can be separately verified i don't know food for thought the kind of thing we can look into um because we really want to get to world where the initial is signed uh and we do not want private keys even in a tpm to exist on individual especially in the cloud on individual instances so we want things signed on our build systems and immutable from there on um just put thoughts I've been having it. Yes, so, so, so we see the, the signature living in a, uh, for, for the inter-D, at least in the unified uh, kernel image approach, the inter-D and the, the kernel are together and have a signature. Yeah. And uh, for system extensions, the signature is also embedded and it's all verified by the kernel. I, I'm not sure this answers the... I, I will have to watch the next talk. Uh... Any other question, comments? Anything on the chat? All time's up, so. Well, thank you, Zinyak.